Hello everybody, my name is Mircea Gogoncha and it is my joy to welcome you to EliteGuitarist.com where you learn how to play the guitar step by step. Today, we are going to be looking at Prelude No. 1 by Ator Villa Labas, his first in the cycle of preludes that he wrote for the classical guitar. And although these pieces were written originally for the guitar, it's important to note that Villa Labas himself was not originally a guitarist. He learned to play the guitar pretty late in his life. Before that, for a very long time, he actually played the cello. And looking through this piece, most of it really functions as a sort of beautiful cello line in the basses. It's, you know, it's, it's all built around this. This flowy cello line in the bass that we can really work to, to bring out in our own playing. So try to channel your inner cellist to make it sound as beautiful as possible. The structure of this piece is actually very simple. Uh, it has three parts, and the first part is repeated exactly once again at the end of the piece. The structure is called ABA in music, and the first part goes until bar 52, that's the cello line part. Then we have a middle part in E major, suddenly very different style of music, uh, that goes from bar 52 until 80. And from bar 80 until the end, we are actually just going to be repeating the first part exactly the same. Only the last two bars are actually different. Uh, so we won't really have to go through that repeat because we will have already worked on it. This is a this is the sort of buy one, get one free piece where you just learn the first two parts or buy two, get one free, I guess. You learn the first two parts and the last part is just a repeat of the one you've already done. Now, when we analyze the first part that we're going to be starting with from bar one until bar 52, it's important to note that this itself can be further split into little segments. And we're going to be looking at these segments one by one because they are very similar in a lot of uh, ways. So once you've gone through the first one, it will be a lot easier to play the second, the third, and so on um, if you keep this similarity and parallel passages in mind. As we start the piece, uh, the first thing you should notice is that there is a line in the bass. That's our cello. And then there is this sequence of answers on the treble strings. And if you look on the music, you will notice that the treble strings actually play the same thing all the time until bar eight. There is no uh, change in the accompaniment in these notes that you play as a response to the bass. Uh, it's literally just the third, second, and first strings played together with your index, middle, and ring finger, I am A. So before we actually go ahead and read this piece, let's just take a second to place our thumb on the fifth string and the top three fingers on the top three strings of the guitar. And let's just do these notes a couple of times to get used to them. Okay, this is the main movement we're gonna have to do in our right hand in the entirety of this first section of the piece. While I do that, if you look at my thumb carefully, my P finger, you'll notice that it stays on the fifth string and it doesn't move. In some situations within this piece, we're going to be using so-called preparation, which is where you put your fingers on the strings a little bit before you need to actually play. And that is because it will be easier for you to learn the piece and to play it on stage. This is not a trick. This is something that I personally do myself, even after 20 something years of playing the guitar on stage. It makes me more secure and it will make it easier for you to learn the piece as well. Okay, so for the very first bar of this piece, we're going to be starting with our index finger, our first finger of the left hand, on the B of the fifth string on the guitar. That is fifth string, second fret, uh, the note will be B, and we will be starting with a long glissando from B, that is a slide from B, all the way up to the seventh fret where we'll have an E. So let's just do that before we actually go and play the piece. I'm sliding on the fifth string between the second fret and the seventh. When you slide, it's important to make some noise uh, that is achieved by maintaining a little bit of pressure on your finger. If you don't have any pressure at all and you just leave the string, there won't be a sound. That's a different thing. In this piece, we want to slide, in this case in particular. 
Now, if you slide, if you use too much force, you might make it sound a little ugly. So don't do that. Find the middle ground, a little bit of tension left in the finger, just enough for the, uh, sl for, for the slide to sound properly. Okay, now, what does the right hand do in this case? Uh, we're going to be starting in that basic position that I just showed you, where your thumb is on the fifth string, and then your top three fingers are on the top three strings of the guitar. Uh, and we're gonna play the thumb by itself without lifting these three fingers, if possible. Now, for the first note, that's very easy. Just gonna be playing it. I actually prefer a rest stroke. In this case, I like the really strong and noble sound that the rest stroke gives me. So uh, for my right hand in this situation, I am actually playing the fifth string and then resting my thumb on the fourth string underneath, like that. If I were to do a free stroke, I would be going like this into my finger. I, however, want a rest stroke here that stops on the fourth string right under the note that we've just played. All right? So, this was the first note. That's actually a little easier. Once we play it and we go all the way to the seventh fret for the slide that I've shown you, we have to do something a little bit more unorthodox, a little bit more unusual. We're going to be taking our thumb and playing both the sixth and the fifth string together. There might be a buzz. My guitar has a bit of a buzz on that fret. Um, if you doze the power really well, you will be able to avoid the buzz. But honestly, if you get a little bit of the buzz, it's not the end of the world. In classical guitar, we tend to be really exaggerated about extraneous noises. And sometimes people get a little bit too caught up in this. Villa Labas, his music uh, is built around these you know, slides and fixed positions. And he moves his left hand all around the fretboard all the time. I just have a hard time believing that he was very concerned with these noises. And actually, you can hear him uh, play this music. Uh, some of it is in the public domain, I believe, already. And you can see that this was not his main concern. So if you get a buzz there, basically, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. It's nice to work against those noises, but you'll be fine. So uh, I've started on the B here in the second fret. Got all the way to the seventh fret here. And now with my thumb, with my P, thumb of the right hand, I'm going to be playing the sixth and the fifth string together and resting on the fourth string. So we're basically still doing a rest stroke just like we did in the beginning, except instead of playing one single uh, string, the fifth, we're going to be playing two strings, the sixth and the fifth. Okay, so to recap, our top three fingers are here on the first strings and we are playing the first B on the second fret, on the fifth string. And from that B, we're sliding to the E on the seventh fret. We're playing both the lower E and the bass in the sixth, sixth string and the fifth string at the same time. Okay, now finally we got to the first accompaniment notes and these are just the top three fingers that we've been holding on these strings played three times. That's it. And you've uh, played most of the first bar. Now, uh, as you follow the bass line, you will notice that these, um, these accompaniment notes come after, but they are not always the same number of repeats. For now, for example, for this one we have three, but a lot of times we'll have a single instance of these three top strings uh, as we move on. All right. This is what we have so far. Now, to continue the melodic line in the bass, we're going to be playing an F sharp, and the F sharp can be played with a third finger, also on the fifth string. Uh, it will be two frets higher than the first finger. So we're gonna play that, and follow that up with one of these accompaniment notes, which are always the same, at least until bar eight, they are the same. All right, after that, we have the G, which is the next note over. And here for the G, I'm gonna give you another trick. If you look in the music, you will see that there's a little rest above the G in the higher voice. Now, there's a lot of debate about what to do with this rest. I personally like to take it as a signal from Villa Labas that we can uh, prepare our top three fingers again. If you put these uh, three fingers on the top three strings together with the next note, which we haven't looked at again, but if you put, the, if you put these three fingers together, on the first three strings at the same time as you play the bass, that is like this, together, together, like that. If you do that, you will actually going to uh, have more security in finding those notes, finding those strings later when their turn comes to play. So 
um, our first note was here in the second fret. We've slid to the seventh fret. Played three accompaniments, three instances of the, of the accompaniment. Followed up with the F sharp that is two frets over with the third finger, bass and response. And then for the next note, we're going to be playing the G, which is the next fret over with the fourth finger. This is the 10th fret. But as we play that note, we're going to be uh, putting all our four right hand fingers on their corresponding uh, strings at the same time. So we'll be playing, we'll be putting the thumb, the P on the fifth string. And at the same time, I am a index middle ring finger on the top three strings of the guitar. We're going to be playing the bass by itself without lifting the top fingers. And then a response repeated three times in the top voice. I'm just gonna demonstrate everything so far very slowly. That's it. All right, now we will continue uh, with another note in the bass. As I mentioned before, this is mostly just a bass line with beautiful uh, treble notes as accompaniment uh, painted and sprayed in at uh, important moments. Um, so the next note that we're playing is an A, um, and suddenly this is the first one that will be on the fourth string. So we're going to be staying in the same position as we were before, seventh position. Our, our index finger is in the same place. And we had already the note E and we had F sharp. And in bar two, we had a G here with the fourth finger. The next note is going to be an A, again with the first finger, but this time on the fourth string. So fourth string, same fret that we were in the whole time, that is the seventh fret. And that is going to be a single note in the bass, followed by a single instance of the accompaniment. All right, and that's the end of bar two. For the next note, we're going to be moving on to bar three and we're just going to be continuing the melody in the bass. The next note will be a B. The B is two frets higher than the A. However, I do want you to pay attention to this. I would like to play this note with the fourth finger. It's a little bit unusual because on the other string we had one and three when we were two frets over. We're gonna do the same thing on the fourth string, except this time we're going to be using one and four. This is because we have to slide on this finger later, but uh, let's not get our, uh, ahead of ourselves. Um, the next note, the first note in bar three is a B on the fourth string with the fourth finger. The fret is the ninth if you want to count the frets. And as I've just demonstrated, this B is followed by three instances of the accompaniment. And uh, for the end of bar three, we're actually going to be repeating this note uh, in the bass, which we haven't had before. We haven't had the same note twice yet. Uh, so we're just gonna be playing it again. Same finger, thumb on the right hand, fourth finger on the left hand, and one instance of the accompaniment. As you can see, once you realize that the top notes are always the same, at least for the time being, it makes it very easy to read through this piece because you really only have to concentrate on one voice and the other one stays as it is most of the time. So um, the bar, uh, bar three was basically just uh, two Bs in the bass. The first B was followed by three top notes. And the second B only had one uh, accompaniment response. And now in bar four comes the moment why we have been using the fourth finger here. Because we will be sliding from the B on the fourth finger all the way to the D. The D is uh, three frets higher. It's very easy to find this fret. This is the 12th fret. It's where the body of your guitar begins, unless you have a cutaway guitar, but even in that case, the, the, the top of your body of the guitar should end on the 12th fret. It's a really useful thing to be able to just sort of naturally go uh, as far as your hand will let you, and you'll find the 12th fret. The notes in the 12th fret, by the way, are exactly the same as if you played open strings, only one octave higher. So uh, this is a D in the 12th fret of the fourth string. And we slid to it from the B uh, that we had in the bar before. All right, this is a shorter slide, uh, but we have to slide on the fourth finger. As you slide, make sure not to leave your finger behind. Don't let it do that. That will stop the note. 
if possible, maintain the same shape of your hand as you slide from B to D. This is good, this is bad. Don't do that, okay? So, we're sliding uh, onto the B. The first note of the fourth part is a B. A B is followed by three instances of the accompaniment. And by the way, I like to prepare my hand on the D here. Uh, that means uh, I'm doing the same trick as before. I'm, place I'm placing the thumb on the fourth string, and at the same time, I'm placing the top three fingers on the top three strings. All right? Uh, very good. The last bass note in bar four will be C, which we haven't had before. That is two frets lower than the D we were just playing. We were just playing the D here, and we're going to be playing in the tenth fret with the second finger on the D. That's right here. That's the note, and then we have uh, one single instance of the accompaniment. All right, uh, pretty easy. Now we're on to bar five. In bar five, uh, we will be going one fret lower, but not changing the position of our hands. We're just gonna be using the first finger on the fret right next to the one we've just played that is here in the ninth fret, okay? So this note is the first of bar five, and this is a B. As you can see, if you look in the music, this is followed by three instances of the accompaniment. Okay, very good. Let me demonstrate what we've got so far, which is from the pickup to bar one, the very beginning of the piece, until uh, this middle of the bar five. That's what we have so far. It's basically all a big E minor chord. Very beautiful. 